Yo, what's going on guys? Sean B here and today I'm back with more Bailey Jensen R5 goodness. With this video, I hope to bring more awareness to the team and I would love to share with you guys the experience I have building this team for myself. I've been waiting for the entire day and I've learned a lot of things about my team that I could improve on and something that you may want to take note of before building the team. BJR5 has very low requirement for both runes and unit and if you are already running KB5 and QB5, you can free up all those net four for your PVP purpose and rebuild some trash unit like you are seeing over here and some toys that you probably won't be using anymore like Colleen or Shina and put them together for your raid five. If you're in Asia server, you should check out the 333 channel because everyone in this channel is dedicated for BJR5. Everyone's looking for a good old BJ in this channel. <laughs> I will link the visual guide which I use to make this team down below in the comment section in the description box. You definitely should read that before you build this team to know the exact number for every single thing. First off, let's talk about the damage dealer. My Bailey is the bare minimum Bailey for both damage and survivability. He's doing around 30.5 to 32k damage on the last hit. You should be doing more than 32 to be extra safe but for now, I've been raiding for the entire day and I'm doing okay. For survivability, you need to survive both the first area attack and the jump afterwards for you to do two waves of damage. So you need to have 90,000 effective HP. It's a very complicated number with complicated formula. So pure damage alone is not enough for Bailey. You need to have some sort of defense and HP in there for him to survive. If you see your Bailey die, you know that you need to boost a little bit more in defense and HP. Simple as that. And slowly but surely, you will get to a point where your Bailey will never die again. This is probably the hardest thing to build in this raid team. If you nail down your Bailey to do the damage required and to survive, I think this is like 60% done. You have to hit the 58% crit rate minimum and no less. You can have a little bit less attack and crit damage because your partner can carry you if you're doing like 1000 damage less than you should be. But if you miss a crit, that's a lot of damage missing. And I've seen 55, 57 crit rate Bailey, not funny. Next up, the defense breaker. People are saying that you should not mix Shina and Lauren, but after playing with Shina for the entire day with different groups with Lauren, Lauren or Shina, Shina, Lauren, I found that it didn't really change anything. Shina can do a lot of damage. She can use the fire attack lead. She has more consistent defense break compared to Lauren. And you don't have to build a second Lauren. After Shina got nerfed in the previous patch, I don't use her in PvP that much anymore. And I only use her in Dragon's B10 to put a very consistent defense break. But it's not really too important. So right now, I have finally found a use for my Shina that is not really doing anything. She can do decent damage to make up for the lack of damage if my Bailey failed to hit 32k. And she put out consistent defense break, which is really, really nice. Next up, we have the attack buffer. There are two choices, Colleen or Fran. According to the visual guy, people prefer Colleen because Colleen has faster animation, it's easier to sync, and Colleen heals based on the team max HP. If you're using friend, you're probably running a four star or five star friend with trash runes. And with that amount of attack, friend would not heal for too much. And the heal actually helped Bailey and Jensen to survive much better. So you want to have a decent heal and Colleen will assure that your team will be pretty healthy after the first AOE attack. Fran has been replacing Colleen for me in most places that Colleen used to be pretty good in. So I've been having an unruined Colleen in storage for the longest time. Now I can use my unruined Colleen, slap on some random ass fight set and a wheel set. Your Colleen will be good to go. She needs to survive the first area attack, but she needs to die to the boss jump so that it will give your Bailey enough stack to do another round of damage. If your Colleen survive after the jump, only the bear will die and then your Bailey will stuck at 4 stack. He would not do enough damage. My Colleen is kind of tanky because of this rune right here. I don't really like it, but crafting 
new five runes cost too much of the red thingy. So I'm using this. She actually died perfectly fine after the boss jump. If I put Jensen in the front line, she may survive. I try that out and I realized that I need to put Jensen in the back line for Colleen to die. When you put something in the front, the damage will be spread it out and then suddenly Colleen will survive. Not funny. And then there's a maximum speed for Colleen because if you exceed that, the Colleen will move before the boss and then it will just desync every single thing that you're trying to build with your teammates. So this is the maximum speed for Colleen that you can achieve. Don't go anywhere above this. Next up, we have the Reviver Jensen. You have to use this guy. You don't need to max skill him, but you cannot use any other Reviver because his revive bring the increased ally attack bar by 30% for each dead ally. Usually you will revive the leader, the bear and Colleen, which give you 90% attack bar that will assure the defense breaker to move and the Bailey to move. His only job here is to survive the jump and then revive and then the run should be over. You can run triple fights on this guy. I'm still looking to craft another two here with enough stat to make sure that he survived. And he should have some speed going on for himself, not too fast, he should be the last to move in the turn order to revive after the boss jump. But I think if you're too slow, it might desync if you're not running a wheel runes because you may get a slow debuff on yourself and the speed start going wonky. For leader skill, there are three different options, fire attack, global crit rate, and fire crit rate. The leader is only here to carry three fight set and die and provide the leader skill. They have no business moving. They should have as little stat as possible to make sure that they die. They should not be six star. There's no need for that. A level one base star is more than enough for them to die and provide the utility that you need them for. Don't use the fine giant warrior. There's a current glitch with his animation and sometimes I notice if the team is using the Fire Giant Warrior, that team will somehow move after my team has moved. And that will cause some trouble with desyncing, allowing my Jensen to start reviving before the boss actually jump. It's very, very weird. It's just weird. Use this guy, he's free to play. You can get him from Scenario or you probably have him in storage as a fodder anyway. He need to have will, he must have will. I've seen bear without will and they get oblivion and then they don't revive. And then the Bailey will not have enough stack because only Colleen will die after the, the jump. You need him to self revive and then he need to die together with Colleen to give Bailey enough stack for the second round of damage. So one set of will, two set of fight. It can all be trash rune, it doesn't matter. So far, the only thing that you really need to ruin are Bailey and the Defense Breaker. Colleen actually need to die so you don't need to invest too much of good runes here. And Jensen, if you're building something without a need for speed, just having anything with HP defense will work fine with this guy. So he's not really hard to build. And that's it. I built this thing in one day. The hardest thing was Bailey. The rest were using mediocre runes or shitty trash runes and I didn't need to build any new unit except for five starring my Jensen to make it easier for him to survive. And I'm so, so happy with the result that this team is bringing to me. I really want this team to get super popular. I don't think it's gonna get nerfed because come to us, change the R5 mechanic and that gave birth to this team. And now we have QB5, KB5 still running just fine. And we have another world of BJR5. So. Come to us actually achieve the variety purpose that they set out in the patch note. They want to have more variety in R5 team. And here we are with an entirely new team, interesting concept. And we actually found a use for the Dark Viking. Isn't that pretty awesome? So this team will get super popular. I really hope to see more people popping up in channel 333 in global or Asia, trying to do this team so that we can learn from each other. We can do super speed R5 so that we can progress together. And I think that's really, really cool. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you are building this team and I'll see you guys in the next one because I've been here for way too long. <laughs>